exercise 10.1. This will bring us through learning objective number one. Let's see what we have here. Setting standards and preparing a standard cost card. Swedish pharmaceutical company Davos Pharmacia makes an anticoagulant drug. The main ingredient in the drug is a raw material called Alpha SR40. Information concerning the purchase and use of Alpha SR40 follows. Let's see what we have. Purchase of Alpha SR40. The raw material, Alpha SR40, is purchased in two kilogram containers at a cost of 3,000 krona per kilogram. A discount of 2% is offered by the supplier for payment within 10 days, and Davos Pharmacia takes all discounts. Shipping costs, which Davos must pay, amount to 1,000 krona for an average shipment of 10 2 kilogram containers. Then we have a, a section on the use of Alpha SR40. Let's see what that is. The bill of materials calls for 6 grams of Alpha SR40 per capsule of the anticoagulant drug. And uh, we have here in brackets, a kilogram equals 1,000 grams. That's for our friends in the U.S. Hello back there in the dark ages. Um, up here in the present, uh, just keep that in mind, that a kilogram equals 1,000 grams. About 4% of all Alpha SR40 uh, uh, purchased is rejected as unsuitable and is not used to make the anticoagulant drug. Thus, on average, the 6 grams of suitable Alpha SR40 required for each capsule represents 96% of the amount that initially goes into production. And that may sound a little bit confusing, but we'll see how we can solve sort of that problem two different ways. So, let's begin. Required. Number one, compute the standard purchase price for one gram of Alpha SR40. So, we're going to take this in two steps. We want the, uh, the, the price per gram, but all the information we're given to us is in two kilogram packages. So we're going to compute the price per two kilogram container and then convert it to grams. So what do we have? Well, we know the purchase price. Purchase price was 3,000 krona. Less, we take care of all discounts, so we get a discount off that. And the discount is 2%, so... That'll lower our price by 60. But we have to pay shipping. Now, shipping is given to us in bulk. Shipping is given to us as 1,000 krona per 10 2 kilogram packages, which would total 100. So our total cost is 3,040 krona per 2 kilograms, uh, for, for 2 kilograms, per 2 kilograms. So our cost per gram is our cost per two kilograms divided by the number of grams in two kilograms which is two thousand which would be 152 kroner per gram there we are okay so part two compute the standard quantity of alpha sr40 in grams per capsule that passes final expect inspection. So, what we want to do for number two is we need to come up with a standard amount of grams per unit. Very well. Well, the first thing we're going to do is take care of our direct materials per unit, which is six grams. There we go. So we know that six grams go in, but then we have this little bit of a difficulty, don't we? The reject rate. Four percent is rejected. In other words, this 6 grams represents 96% of the total. So, there are two ways to solve the rejected amount. And I'll show you the long way, and I'll show you the short way. So, the long way is to say that, well, 4% of 1,000 grams are rejected, so 40 grams are rejected. Therefore, 960 grams are used out of the 1,000, 6 grams per unit equals a yield of 160. So we should make 160 units out of the other 960. So we want to spread the 40 grams over the 160 units. So we have the 40 rejected 
divided by the 160 yield means that for each one that we make, we discard 0.5 grams. So there's one way uh, to get our 0.25 grams, to get our rejected amount. So that is 6.25 grams. That's our standard quantity. The other way to get it is to follow the question. <clears throat> the 6 grams represent 96%. So 6 divided by 0.96 is 6.25, and since 6 grams are used, 0.25 grams are rejected. So we can do it one of two ways. So there we go, 6.25 grams is our standard quantity. Number three, using the data from 1 and 2 above, prepare a standard cost card showing the standard cost of alpha SR40 per capsule of the anticoagulant drug. So we'll squeeze it over here. We're going to fill out a standard, and this will only be one line really, a standard cost record. So we have our input, standard quantity times standard cost equals standard quantity times standard cost. So our input, we only have one input in this case, and that's direct materials. We have a standard quantity of 6.25 grams times our standard cost, which is 1.52 kroner per gram, which will give us 9.5 kroner per unit. There we go. That is 10.1. Exercise 10.2 for learning objective number two. Let's see what we have. Material variances. Fantastic Feeder Products uh, manufactures high-quality wooden cutting boards sold to restaurants and gourmet home cooks. One of these boards, the Surti Pro 2, requires an expensive hardwood. During a recent month, the company manufactured 1,200 Surti Pro 2 cutting boards using 540 meters of hardwood. The hardwood cost the company $2,970. The company standards for one Surti Pro 2 cutting board are 0.4 meters of hardwood at a cost of $5 per meter. What I like to do when I uh, do these questions is I like to identify my four variables if I can. So I need a standard quantity, and we're told our standard quantity is 0.4 meters per unit. We need a standard cost, and we're told that we have a standard cost of $5 per meter. Once we have our standard cost and our standard quantity, we want to see if we can come up with an actual quantity. And we're told that uh, we used 540 meters. And we have an output. Once we have our actual quantity, we can also write down that we have an output of we made 1200 cutting boards and we need we don't have a standard cost but we can uh, sorry an actual cost but we can calculate an actual cost but because we're given aq times ap the actual quantity times the actual price is 2970 so we can calculate an actual price if we want but it we will see it's really not that important to know the actual price required number one what cost for wood should have been incurred to make 1,200 Surti Pro 2 cutting boards? How much greater or less is this than the cost that was incurred? So in other words, we're looking for a flexible budget amount. If the actual output was 1,200, what we're asking is what should have been the cost? So number one is very easy to do. We're going to have our standard quantity times our standard cost times actual output. In other words, we're going to get a budget amount for this level of output. So our standard quantity is 0.4, our standard cost is $5, and our actual output is 1200, and we'll find that that equals 2400. There you go, it's really just that simple. Number two in this question asks, Break down the difference computed in one above into a material price variance and a material's quantity 
variance. Oh, sorry, we're not quite done number one. Let me just jump back a minute. It asks how much greater or less is this than the cost that was incurred? So the cost that was incurred, the actual cost, 2970 minus the 2400 equals $570. Since this is greater than zero, remember any difference that's greater than zero is unfavorable. So it's 570 unfavorable. Now let's break it down. So our first column is actual quantity times actual price. And we already have it. It's given to us as 2970. So we don't actually have to do much there. Then we're going to use actual quantity times standard price. We're just changing the price from actual price to standard price to get the price variance. So actual quantity times standard price. The actual quantity was 540. Standard price, standard cost over here is $5. So 540 times $5 is $2,700. So we can see our price variance. Is 2970 minus 2700, which is $270. It's positive, it's greater than zero, so it's unfavorable. So we have a $270 unfavorable price variance. Now let's break it down into the quantity variance, and here it's just standard quantity uh, for standard quantity for the output of 1,200 cutting boards times the standard price. Well, the standard quantity times standard price, we've already done it uh, uh, for this level of output was 2400. But if you want to see how it's done again for the standard uh, uh, quantity, it would be 0.4 uh, times uh, the, the 1200 times 5, which is our standard cost. But we've already done that, so 2400. 2700 minus 2400 for our quantity variance. You can see that that is $300. It's greater than zero, so it's unfavorable. So let's see if that worked out. Going from our standard by standard to actual by actual, we have a flexible budget variance. And it's 2970 minus 2400, so we have $570 unfavorable. Does that make sense? Well, 300 plus 270 is 570. 570 matches the 570 unfavorable up here. It makes perfect sense. There we go. There's 10 too.